I'm an architect, and I work with sustainable materials to build uh, buildings. And why I work with sustainable materials is uh, because, firstly, they are a lot better at climate control than any other uh, concrete or regular building that you build these days. And secondly, um, it's, it's not at all a pollutant. It doesn't pollute this, uh, as solid waste or uh, as uh, carbon content in the air. So when I talk about earth buildings, uh, something like this probably comes in your head. It's um, you know, a regular shack in a village in Pakistan somewhere. But what if I told you that these were also earth buildings, um, modern earth buildings, uh, and that these were possible here in Pakistan? So uh, the kind of earth buildings that we work with in particular are rammed earth buildings. Um, so it's basically just a mixture of clay, gravel, and sand, and it's rammed uh, within a formwork like this. A, a foundation is laid, and then um, earth is poured inside it, and then it's rammed with electric rammers, just plain earth, no, nothing else. Maybe a little bit of concrete is added for stabilization, like maybe 4%, that's all. Um, and the result is a very solid uh, rammed earth wall, which is stronger than any concrete or any stone wall that you've ever built. Most, uh, someone was asking me yesterday if it's as secure because they were living in Karachi, but um, it, it doesn't chip off or break like any you know, regular pile of uh, earth. It's a very strong, like any other stone building. After a few years, it's actually even stronger than any stone building. And the best part is that it looks beautiful. It has these beautiful patterns because it's compacted in layers. And if you want to increase the colors in this, you can add more pigments to this kind of um, uh, construction as well. So how it's done is basically um, that um, if you add other design features into it, um, you can improve the climatic control qualities of it. For example, this is an earthship building in New Mexico. We uh, constructed it in uh, USA. It's built into the earth. Uh, so the north side and the east and the west side are built into the earth, and then there are channels, air channels dug into it. And in the front, they've, on the south side, they've kept only sunrooms. So the air that is heated up in the sunrooms, it goes out from the ventilators and cool in, gets sucked into the building. So there's a whole ventilation channel in the winters. And in the summers, the heat that is trapped in the sunroom, it, it radiates uh, during the nighttime from the walls, the very thick uh, thermal mass uh, earth walls. Um, if you want to add more design features to it, for example, in one of our buildings over here, uh, this was a re-envisioning of a barrier town villa. In this, we did something similar. We added sunrooms and we added underground water channels, uh, uh, underground air channels under the courtyard, and that created the same ventilation effect as the previous building. Uh, so the effect of such a thing was that we reduced the energy bill to less than half. So you can see over here that the total ener annual energy for a regular building was 33,000 kilowatt hours in the blue um, square but we reduced it to 7,000 or 12,000 kilowatt hours annually. So that's more than, you know, less than half of the uh, original energy requirement. So traditionally in our uh, country as well, we usually built with cob, that's layering of earth. You must have, uh, you, you remember it probably from a few decades earlier in your villages, people used to build like these. Or in the north, we used to build with, you know, this is called dhajji construction. But it was some or the other form of earth. But we left all of these because of a few reasons. Firstly, um, the foundations, they were also built of earth. And so we couldn't stop water from coming in from the foundations. And then the water would also leak from the roofs sometimes because the roofs were also built of either wood or, you know, uh, twigs or something like that. And the other thing was that we used to have large spaces, so we would have overhangs verandas, and those would protect the surface of our walls. But we don't have space for having verandas anymore, which were actually very important for our climate. And we've just copied the Western model, and we're building barrier town villas, and this is what's happening. We're losing all of these traditions. So, but nowadays, we have modern earth construction techniques, which tackle all of these issues. There are solutions for all of these. For example, you can have a concrete foundation and you can easily have a, a damp proof course which stops the water from coming in from the foundation. And you can have like little protrusions on the wall, like for example brick protrusions, which stops erosion on the surface of the wall. And it looks beautiful like that in the picture over there as well. Um, this is another um, building of ours that we did in Austria. And 
this is how these brick protrusions look when uh, put on the surface. They look beautiful as well, but they have a purpose. This is one of our projects that we did over here, the re-envisioning of the Beharia Town Villa. Um, we did this in rammed earth. So wherever you don't have space for an overhang or a veranda, the, the thing that I was talking about earlier, we introduced screens so that at least you can stop the sunlight from coming in and the water from coming in the, in the front in the form of screens. These are just manually retractable screens made out of bamboo and tensile fabric, that's all. So you just pull it down when you need to pull it down and push it up when you need sunlight. Then another thing that we introduced were courtyards. So um, we, if you generally uh, see like old havelis in Lahore, we always used to have courtyards um, in any urban dwellings. But we left that thing and we copied the Western model and now we keep setbacks all around our building. But if you come to think of it, that's all wasted outdoor space because in our cultural context, nobody sits in the front lawn or the side lawns because you know we need privacy. So we need to reintroduce this kind of courtyard living because that outdoor space is within the building and it's private and it's more suitable for our cultural context. And then the other reason why it's important is because the ventilation effect that a courtyard uh, uh, building creates, that reduces the uh, energy consumption to a lot because it's a lot cooler in summers compared to any other normal you know, bungalow and uh, sector in Islamabad. So this is the, how the courtyards would look like. Um, and then you would always obviously have a lot of natural features inside as well. So you're bringing nature inside to your home as well. Another thing that we introduced here was actually outdoor sleeping. We used to do that a lot in old times in Pakistan. In our villages, sometimes people do that even now. And there was a reason for it, because that was important for us in uh, summer times. But we left that probably because now we, we need to go to our own private bedrooms. We need privacy a lot more than before. So we tried to reintroduce that by building small little sunrooms on top of a normal bedroom. And that was all private. It was like a, a enclosed by uh, glass windows. So you, you would be private, but you could open the windows and like have the same outdoor sleeping effect that you used to have in old times. But it would be your private bedroom. Um, so we uh, the same um, thing again we uh, introduced was that we try to introduce hybrid systems, either uh, passive um, systems or active energy systems that we could combine because no energy source right now, alternate energy, either wind or solar, can actually compete with fossil fuels. So the only way out for us to reduce our energy consumption is to you know combine different design strategies and work with them together. So uh, we did that um, over here with solar, uh, uh, solar water heaters and natural gas geysers to heat up water and radiate uh, around the whole house to uh, heat up in the winters. Then this was our proposal for the low cost, uh, PTI low cost housing design. We built rammed earth buildings in four stories and we introduced the same kind of screens over here. And the buildings were joined together so that the walls that were exposed to the outdoor environment were reduced. And that would also help a lot in controlling the temperature, the building. This is a um, detail of the screen uh, that I was talking about in bamboo and in tensile fabric. It's really simple and it's manually retractable. It doesn't need any kind of energy to operate this screen. Um, since it was an urban design project, we also tried to conserve water in it because we have such a big issue of water um, in our uh, cities. So it, the simple solution for that, firstly, is to separate sewage from rainwater drainage. Because all the rainwater that drains and combines with the sewage, we basically lose that water. And the other simple solution for that is to introduce these bioswales and rainwater drainage systems. They're just fancy words for an earth dug stream, which slows down the uh, flow of water so that the water can seep into the earth and the water table can rise. That's all. We just need to separate the rainwater drainage and allow it to flow slowly like this in these uh, uh, drainage systems. Um, another thing you might have not noticed is that whenever we build from the Western model and copy it over here, uh, we, uh, don't, we always forget that in our culture, we have a combination of a joint family and a nuclear family system. So we always try to live with our family members, even like when a son grows up and he gets married. What we generally do is we build a double story house, we build a separate entrance for it, and when the son gets married, he's going to have a separate house on top of the parent's house. So we don't think about this life cycle flexibility that we need in our culture. Over here, what we did was that we 
try to separate them horizontally. So these were symmetrically uh, split designs. So in the future, if the son grows up and he wants to have a separate house, but right next to his parents because he doesn't want to move away, he can just we can just split the uh, flat into half, and one side would be for the parents and the other would be for the son. So you can keep that life cycle flexibility uh, within the design, without even having to have the same uh, structure for both the families. So this is what a generally a rammed earth building looks like. This was a small structure that we built in Austria. Um, and uh, apart from being climatically responsive and reducing your energy bill to uh, less than half, it's also very beautiful. This is the uh, earth chip building that we built in New Mexico. Um, it's built of purely earth and old bottles, actually. The, the round things that you see in front are old bottles. Um, you will have sunrooms that will look like this. They're beautiful. Um, and basically, you will not only have a building that will uh, make you feel comfortable in the winters and in the summers and reduce your energy bills and be more than uh, less than half of the price of a regular construction of a concrete building, but you will also have a very beautiful building to live in. So it's, uh, as a conclusion, it is possible in Pakistan to build these buildings. Um, buildings like these. We are doing it. Me and my husband, we're both architects. We have this firm, Surya Khaki. We're trying to reintroduce earth construction in Pakistan. And uh, it's completely possible in Pakistan. It's safe. It's um, climatically more responsive. And it's also beautiful. And maybe you are our next clients. <laughs>